My name is uh, Harris Orkin. I'm a game writer and a voice director in Southern California. I've been working with Techland since 2006 when they hired me to help them with the very first Call of Juarez game. I actually saw an early demo of the game at E3 in 2005, and being a huge fan of Westerns, I suggested to them that they should consider hiring an American writer to help them get the dialogue right. And I guess I was convincing because a few months later they asked me to give them a hand. You know, apparently they liked what I did because I've been a writer and voice director in all their games ever since. Anyway, I was very pleased when I heard we were going back to the past for Call of War as Gunslinger. I mainly worked with uh, lead producer Christoph, or Chris as he suggested I call him, as his name is impossible to spell in English. He and Rafal, the other writer on the project, came to me with a few of the levels already built and a basic idea of what they wanted the game to be. They didn't have characters or a story yet. In fact, everyone wasn't entirely sure they needed a conventional story, as it was slated to be an arcade game. But they also said they wanted the game to feature some of the most iconic Western legends and characters from the past. Together, we crafted a story based on that premise. The player would be someone who brushed against all those famous characters. Rafael had already been thinking about this, and I joined the effort. I sent them images of dime novels from the Autry Museum here in Los Angeles. The Autry is probably the world's greatest repository of Wild West memorabilia, history, and research. They came to me with the idea of the entire game being narrated a la Bastion. They told me they wanted narrative tricks in the game, that things in the game world would change depending on the narrator's story. I thought that idea was, was pretty brilliant, and it mirrored exactly how the history of the West came to be written in the first place how the legends became bigger-than-life characters created to entertain the masses, first in dime novels, later by Hollywood. So what is true and what isn't became a big theme in the game, and there were favorite movies of mine that played with those themes. The first thing I thought of was Little Big Man, a movie directed by Arthur Penn starring Dustin Hoffman. It followed the life of a fictional character who brushed against many of the Wild West's greatest legends. Another movie that came to mind was one of my favorites, John Ford's iconic western, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. One of the famous quotes from that movie informed the entire project for me. When the legend becomes fact, print the legend. That's pretty much the central theme of Call of Juarez Gunslinger, the collision between truth and myth. So now we had to create a character who would take us on this journey. Clearly, it would be a gunslinger, since this was obviously a shooter. Someone who was a bounty hunter made sense, as they would have a reason to go after all these famous outlaws. They all had bounties on their heads. I convinced the team that we needed an overarching story to tie everything together, and they bought into it. They knew they also wanted collectibles that told the real history of the West the truth as we know it about the characters and events of the times. So I coined the terms Nuggets of Truth, and we collaborated on writing those as we worked on the game. It became quite ambitious, a little mini history book inside an arcade game. Being we're all Western history buffs, we really enjoyed putting that all together and introducing the Wild West to a generation of players who may not know much about it. While Techland had some of the levels of the game partly finished, and others were still in early stages. As we outlined the story, we kept rearranging the order of the levels. Now that changed quite a bit as the story was worked out. At the same time, Techland had a big list of narrative tricks that they wanted to try. I contributed to that list and we had to figure out which levels to put them in and how best to implement them. Chris told me which of my ideas were possible and which weren't technically feasible. Amazingly, they made quite a few of them work. That last level was a bitch to put together, and you can blame me for the concept. I'm guessing the level designers were probably cursing me out as they were struggling to make it work, but in the end, they succeeded brilliantly. I love the art style in the game, and I thought it matched perfectly with the dime novel theme. I loved how all the famous characters looked bigger than life and had a real specific theme. Some of the locations that were already created didn't exactly match the way those locations looked in reality. In particular, the level on the moving train was set somewhere in the Southwest, when in actuality the James Gang operated in Missouri, in Kansas, and that area of the country looks a lot different. But considering the story was basically Silas spinning truths mixed with lies and bullshit, I decided not to worry too much about those specifics. Uh, there was a lot of talk back and forth as to whether or not Greaves should sing a song somewhere in the game. That was one of the ideas for, for a narrative trick. We finally settled on the level, and then we all proposed songs. They had to be in the public domain as we couldn't really afford to buy the rights for a song. Oh, 
Won't you spare me over till another year? What is this that I can't see with ice cold hands taking hold of me? We all loved O Death, Chris especially, and once we determined that John Sagan could sing it, he actually used to perform in musicals, we went with it. He actually sang part of it a little off key. If he sang it too perfectly, it wouldn't have fit the character of a drunk, grizzled old gunslinger. I, uh, I actually proposed another song first. Thank goodness we didn't go with it, as it ended up being a central theme in Bioshock Infinite. So besides collaborating on the writing, I also cast and directed all the voice talent. A lot of really good actors auditioned for the part of Silas Greaves, some of them fairly well known. But I had worked with John before in Call of Juarez 2 and 3, as well as Dead Island, and I knew he could pull it off. He's a very successful voice actor and has been in many games and animated movies, including most of Pixar's films. I knew he would work his ass off, and he was great at not just following direction, but bringing his own ideas to the character and story. I knew I needed someone who would not only be able to play the comedy, but also the drama and the tragedy, and someone who could sound like a badass if he needed to. Luckily, everyone agreed with me that John was, was great casting. Other actors, I'm sure, would have done a fine job, but John really made Silas Greaves his own. The final supporting cast were all equally talented and experienced and brought a lot to the party. It's, it's important to me that every character be as believable as possible. If any one character is weak, it brings everything down. A story is only as strong as its weakest link. I'm really pleased with the reception Gunslinger has received from the critics and fans. We weren't exactly sure it was all going to work, and the fact that it did and that people actually love it, that's yeah, very gratifying. I felt like this was a great collaboration, and if it happens, I would love to work on the next Call of Juarez.